Hey guys, Lucas here. Not sure why I'm showing this, just some sort of proof to those people who don't know me. Yeah, I'm not Zyre Ice Ice Ice, but I play this hero a lot. I've had a lot of success with it in my pubs, so if you want to know some tricks to auto winning your lane and team fights on Pango, then I hope you'll enjoy this video. First thing I don't see enough people doing on Pango Lear is abusing Creep Aggro to punish enemy heroes in lane. I'm just going to let this clip roll and we'll talk about it afterwards. For more proof this isn't a 2k MMR game, I'm going to be tipped by 4Zoomer's very own rank 10 player, He's Sammy really Boy, well until for my that. kill on this top 100 Immortal Ember Spirit player. I'm now going to show you one more clip yeah, and then dive losing. into how this trick works. Let's see what happens against this Void Spirit. Alright, so if you caught that, now we're going to go into how this mechanic works. So here I'm going to draw creep aggro, I'm going to pull creeps onto my range creep, and here, what is going to happen? My range creep is going to start dying at a very fast rate. There are three enemy melee creeps attacking it, and in terms of the range creep on the enemy side, so he could also decide to pull the creeps back, I would also have to deal with that in some circumstances, in which case I would have my swashbuckle, that would more or less leave me pretty safe, and we would have to deal with that as the time comes. But um, typically, this is a relatively safe thing to do. And here, we are prompting the enemy to figure out what to do with this creep. So in this circumstance, he sees the creep is dying. We get that last hit, and the enemy walks up. And here we see he wants to get this last hit. So what are we going to do? Our creeps were dying at a very fast rate to the enemy melee creeps. And now all of a sudden, if we right-click on the Void Spirit, we are drawing creep aggro off of our range creep, and he's going to have to figure out how to deal with this. Now all of a sudden the range creep has way more health than the Void Spirit thought. He's going to walk up. He's going to see, oh, well, I have to cast my spells on this creep now. He's going to not be too happy. He's going to go for this. And what has happened here? I've already gotten two free auto attacks off on this Void Spirit. As you can see, the health of the Void Spirit isn't looking too great. His positioning isn't looking too great as he's going to have to walk backwards towards his tower. And here I'm just going to get continuous auto attacks off and this trade will 100% favor. He, bought, he got vacuum level too. Alright, so this kind of leads me to another point about determining what makes a good trade, which is a very hard question to answer. That has to do a lot with the state of the lane, namely, where is the enemy positioned? What's the hero matchup? How many creeps does the enemy have alive versus how many creeps I have alive? How is the lane going? Am I ahead? Am I behind? How many items do the enemy have? And a lot of these things you have to kind of calculate in your head, and that, that makes it very hard because it's not, it's not like a simple question to ask, should you trade with the enemy right now? So in this circumstance, I know that the enemy barely ferried out his bottle, barely, ha barely had enough money for his bottle. I know I want to trade earlier on in the lane, so I know I'm ahead. I know I have a Wraith Band on my inventory, which he, he only has a, he doesn't even have a Null Talisman yet. I know I have a Salve, so he pushes a little bit far up. And I notice this, and I say, hey, maybe it's a good idea for me to trade with him here. And so I end up saying, okay, whoa, you're not going to zone me off this entire wave. I'm going to trade back with you. Here, he ends up, I don't know if he realizes this, but he aggroes uh, two creeps as well. And so this trade ends up going not that bad for me. Again, I'm ahead on items, and he's forced to back off. Well, Earth Spirit dying could be bad, because this guy could get a bottle refill in a second. So as you saw 10 seconds ago, Void Spirit tried to zone me off the wave. And this will happen in a lot of players' games. Maybe you're playing against a Queen of Pain or something, and maybe you'll play against, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a Templar Assassin. They'll try to do this to you, where they'll try to move past the wave, and they'll try to just isolate you and do some sort of 1v1 that you might, you probably won't win because you're against a stronger hero. And you just have to avoid the these situations by actually lot. making sure you have enough regen to make these trades uh, when they favor you. Or even if they don't favor you, you have to make these plays, otherwise you're going to be zoned off the entire wave. I didn't so just look out for that. Alright, so there's one more scenario I want to oh, look shit, at versus the Void Spirit, but until then I want to talk really shit. quickly about the items. So I do have a guide out on Steam to see the updated builds in-game, but I'll go over them right now really quick. So on mid lane, I've been starting with uh, Quelling Blade Circlet, Fairy Fire, two shared Pull tangos and Obsword, regular tangos, and two branches. Look to upgrade into Wraith Band depending on the lane, or you can rush Bottle. And make sure you ferry a Salve before the Bottle if it is needed. You're going to want to then look to purchase a Javelin, um, and then your basic boots. You can then choose between Power Treads or Maelstrom, um, getting one first or the other first, it doesn't really matter. And then look to pick up a Diffusal Blade. Really much reason Again, this is the most common build that, uh, that I'll go most games. And typically, if you can aim for a 20-minute fusel timing, it's considered really, really good. 
I'll then look towards Yikes. Basher or PPD or Andisk yeah. or Lincolns typically. I'm missing too much DS. Um, for so offlane, you're typically going to want to look for a Ringer Protection to start with, and then other than the Maelstrom, you're going to buy a Vlad's instead for offlane, and then go Vlad's Diffusal, and then kind of build into the same items that you would buy on mid lane. All right, so we're going to now hop into one more circumstance really fast where the Void Spirit is looking at a situation where he needs to get this range creep. Uh, as you can see, I use I use exactly the ex the literal exact same thing that I mentioned earlier to put this Void Spirit slightly out of position. My Tiny comes in for a gank. This would have probably gone well regardless of if the Tiny was here, but um, yeah, as you can see, the result is that the Void Spirit does die. Now again, a lot of you could be saying that this is this is a bad Void Spirit or something like that, but these these plays work on work on every that I play against. These, these top 200 players will will fall for this every time where they really want to get that last hit, and you can abuse this situation a lot in your pubs. Alright, so another tip for Pango revolves around baiting and catching the enemy mid player in unsafe positions, where you can abuse your either long swashbuckle range to win a trade and maybe secure a kill, or you can use swashbuckle to get into a great position to set up for a great roll. So in this circumstance, I'm playing against an SF player uh, in one of my pubs, and here is something that he is going to do. Um, that is not going to work very well. So here, uh, I'll pause it here so you guys can see. Um, the SF player goes up to kill some creeps with zero health. Now, I'm not sure if he has a ward or if he knows my positioning or anything, but we see here he walks a little bit too far up. And we do a max range swashbuckle onto his hero, and we are able to not secure a kill, but deal enough damage that you can tell it was definitely a great trade. And we are able to secure the rune after as well at 4 minutes. Alright, so one more situation, again, these are all from, like, this is literally my last uh, two games that I've gotten all these clips from. So, I do these, I do these sort these things in literally every game, and these players fall for it in every game as well. So here I'm, I've hit level 6 on Pango, I walk over to the rune, um, I don't know, I guess I expected a rune to be there. <laughs> but, um, but here we're gonna see that this SF is gonna make a mistake, where he plays a little too aggressively, again, I play far back, um, I say I can kill him here if he fucks up, and here I see him go a little bit too far in, I set up my Q, we do get the lucky shot proc slowing the enemy, and we go in for a roll. Um, and this is something that if you've watched my stream you've seen me do countless times. Mid players do not respect Pangolier. It doesn't matter what rank they are, they could be, they could be top 2000, top 200, top 100. Uh, no, nobody really understands still how much damage you can actually deal with Rolling Thunder, and if you are good at using that spell and going between walls and making sure that people remain stunned then you can definitely catch a lot of people off guard every sf player i play against doesn't respect roll all right so i know i'm probably just beating a dead horse right now but i really just want you guys to understand how how impactful you can be in these games with your role so this is just one more game where the slash drag makes a mistake where i go in for a swashbuckle and he just decides to go on me he i see he steps a little bit too far out of position and then i go into a roll and I mean, you guys will see. This is this is what happens. Um, I've already died once to this guy in lane. Honestly, this guy solo killed me. I was zero one, you know. But but Pango is one of those heroes where I actually don't lose hope in the game after I get solo killed because I just hit level six, and these players just have absolutely zero respect for my role. Top two hundred players, every game, die to my role in the mid lane. So you guys can do it too. Alright, so I have one more super Pango specific tip, as opposed to those other tips in the video. They're kind of generic melee mid heroes, I suppose, but they work really well on Pango. Um, and this has to do with extending yeah, your you Rolling Thunder duration with your Shield Crash. So here I go on this Earth Spirit, I notice my Rolling Thunder is running out as I bounce off the wall, and I notice I can skill W to extend the duration of my Rolling Thunder, and I am able to collide with the Earth Spirit. Yeah, let's kill this arc. It's okay to skill W there. And here's me justifying I myself. My role. So I guaranteed my regen from the blast. Alright, so one more clip. The exact same thing happens. I'm just going to let it play. And hopefully you guys will see that this is a cool trick to have in your back pocket. Sure, in case you ever need it when you're rolling. I will also say though that I see a lot of people casting level 1 shield crash. When it doesn't really do much damage. So you should just be a little bit careful about your mana pool. Especially on early levels in the game. Alright, thanks again for watching this video, guys. Uh, just gonna go over one more thing I don't see people doing enough of. If you're rolling, you can cast Fusal while you're rolling. 
Um, defusal as well as other items. You can cast while you're rolling, and defusal will help you actually catch up to the enemy and roll into him. Another thing that I don't see enough of is you can pre-cast Swashbuckle while you're stunned. So here Lena is going to set up for a Yule's combo. I'm going to cast my Q, and you can see that my Q will instantly be cast as soon as I come down from the Yule Scepter. So this is very applicable for when he wants to combo with Light Strike Array. Even if he has perfect timing, uh, I'll get stunned, but I will get stunned at the location that my Swashbuckle ends, so I'd be stunned like here. Uh, one more thing, if you want to subscribe to the guide, it doesn't really help me that much, but I think it will help you guys a lot. I'll overlay it on the screen right now. Um, just the footnotes under the spells, kind of, and just being able to draw from this pool of items that I also look at every time I play. Um, depending on the game, you know, there's a lot of items you can buy, and it kind of just helps seeing what items are available. I'll also leave a link to the guide if you want to subscribe to it or check it out under the stream as well. It just kind of has a lot of my thoughts that I've gone over. Uh, I haven't really gone over in this video. I've kind of gone over a lot of mid lane mechanic tips, but uh, I think that the guide will help you a lot as well. So thanks again for watching. Uh, if you want to sub to my YouTube, it helps me a lot, and I hope you guys have a great day.